In this section, we're going to start taking a look at some of the final things in differentials that we're going to do with MATLAB. And the two main focuses is to be able to solve a system of differential equations, and then to be able to identify some of the key characteristics of that system. And then also to use the ODE45 function, which is probably going to be one of the more important functions that you're using on MATLAB for. So let's start off with solving systems. Tom, basically you're going to extend the dsolve function. And remember, we use dsolve to be able to find first order solutions, second order solutions, even um, series solutions to differentials. And so we're going to use it for systems by basically making a matrix of uh, equations and then getting a matrix of solutions as well. So if we want to try to code um, the, 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 to be able to generate a solution to a system of equations, what we're going to do is we're going to define a few sims variables. We're going to get two ordinary differential equations. All right, so we have this system and we can define as such. And then we're going to create a matrix of the ordinary differential equations. And then this code right here is going to help us to be able to get the general solutions. These two lines are going to print the general solutions. And what's going to happen here is when it's stored, it's actually stored in a record. Um, for those of you that are computer science people, a record is just a data structure that houses, it's similar to a matrix, but you can access different things within the record. Um, and so we're going to access the X solution and the Y solution. To be able to define the conditions, we're going to basically make a set of conditions, and then we're going to go ahead and find the particular solution. All right, so, um, so basically this line is going to print the particular, so the general solution for these two, for X and Y. And this line is going to give us the particular solution, all right? So this is general and this is particular. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this using a different system. So we have our system x prime equals 3x minus 4y plus 1, y prime is 4x minus 7y plus 10t. And then here's our initial conditions. We want to find both the general and particular solutions, and then we're going to plot the um, equations or plot the solutions with the same graph and try to figure out a solution as to where x at t is equal to y at t. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so first I'm gonna start a new script and I'm gonna start with CLC and clear all. And I'm gonna define two symbolic variables. So we're gonna have an x at t and we're gonna have a y at t. And we're going to define our first ordinary differential equation, which I'm going to call ODE1. And that's where we just go back to what is going to be on the, um, on the first line of our differential system. So that's going to be um, diff x is equal to, we have the differential 3 times x minus 4 times y plus 1. And we're going to use the exact same code except we're going to have for the exact same structure. So ODE2 is going to be equal to diff y, double equals, all right? Because oh, this is assigning the single equal assigns to ODE2, the single equal assigns to ODE1. Um, that's going to be our differential 4x minus 7y plus 10t, all right? So that's going to be our equations. Um, and at this point, what we could do is we can go ahead and create the matrix of ODE. So I'm going to call it ODES, which is our system. So ODE system um, is going to be equal to ODE1, semicolon ODE2. And now we're going to desolve. So I'm going to assign that to the variable S. Um, ODES or ODE system, all right? And I'm going to go ahead and run this just to show you what happens as to why we need this s.x and s.y. So I'm going to go ahead and run. And I need to save it. And it's thinking. And it's still thinking. So you might want to fast forward until you can actually see something in the command window and then come back. Apologies. 
All right. So if you run it like this, it says there's a struct with the field. So there's a one by one symbolic variable and a one by one symbolic variable. So we can go ahead and use s.x and s.y. And I'll run it again. And then here are our solutions. All right. So this is. So basically, this is the s, and then s dot x gives us this, and then s dot y gives us this for our solutions. All right. Now, I'm going to assign those. All right. So I'm going to say x sol in terms of t is going to be equal to s dot x, and y sol in terms of t is going to be equal to s dot y. And I'm going to suppress this. And when I go ahead and run it one last time, at least for this part, it's just going to tell us what the solutions are, all right? And we have to scroll over a little bit. So this will be pretty rigorous for us to do by hand, all right? And notice it gives us what the general solution is, all right? Now we need the particular solution, all right? So here's how we're going to get that. We're going to go back and we're going to assign our initial conditions. So I'm going to call it condition one. It's going to be x at zero is going to be equal to two suppress and then condition two is going to be y at zero is going to be equal to three and i'm going to suppress and then i'm going to say i'm going to create a matrix of conditions so i'm going to say conditions is going to be equal to cond one semicolon cond two suppress that and then finally, we can get the solutions. And we're going to assign those to x sol and y sol. So x sol at t, and then comma, y sol at t is going to be equal to d sol again. And we're going to have the system of ODEs, but now we're going to have the conditions. All right. Um, and we're not going to suppress that because that's going to be our solution, even though it gives us the red underline there asking us to suppress it. All right. Um, and I did miss a bracket right here. All right. So that's good. All right. So let's give it a run and let's see what happens this time. And we should end up with four lines. So this was the line we had before. This is the general solution. And then here are the particular solutions for X and Y. Okay, so pretty cool that we're able to get those um, really quickly by using MATLAB. All right, so um, if we wanted to, we could really do some F printf statements to be able to see, um, you know, particularly what the solutions are, but um, it's fine without those. All right, now, one last thing that it's asking us to do is to be able to um, graph both of the solutions on the same, or plot both solutions on the same graph and estimate where the points of intersection might be. All right, so I'm going to do an easy plot, not x plot, but easy plot. And I'm going to plot x sol t. And I need to capitalize x sol. Right? Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the hold on, and then I'm going to easy plot y sol of t. And then I'm going to hold off. All right. So let's run this and see what we can get. And we might have to wait a little bit to be able to generate the graph. All right. So here's our solutions to this uh, series or the system of differentials. And then we're going to wait a minute, still running. You can tell up here. So it just might take a minute to plot these. Um, as we see, by the way, there's going to be two exponential solutions. So when we get the graphs, they should be two exponential curves. They may or may not intersect on the graph, but we're going to give it a try and see what happens. All right, so it looks like it's trying to get there. And there it is, fine. OK. Now, if I were to look at the graph to figure out a possible solution for this, all right, and I stretch this out and it's still trying to work at it, it looks like maybe right around here might be a solution for us, all right? Um, however, we're not necessarily certain that that like somewhere around here is gonna be exactly the solution. So we can certainly zoom in or we could try to 
um, limit the range of the graph or the domain of the graph. So I'm going to close this out. And maybe what we can do is we can say comma of negative four to negative two for both of these. All right, just to get a domain in there. And that might help us a little bit more if we're approximating by using the graph. Or hopefully. All right, so solutions. And then here's our graphs. So it looks like maybe somewhere in here is going to be like the point of intersection. All right, now there is a function that we can use. I'm going to say VPA, because remember, we used this function before. We use the solve, and we could say x solve to t equals y solve at t. And this may or may not give us an answer. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. Maybe this will give us an approximation, or if we're really lucky, an exact value. I doubt it'll give us an exact value, but we can always try. All right, so it says it's unable to solve symbolically, and it used this other function, VPA solve. All right, so VPA solve is a numerical solver. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use VPA solve. And most of the time, that's going to be the one that you really need to get the approximate solution. All right, so here it is right here. Um, VPA solve, by the way, is really nice because you can just get the approximation. Um, you can also give an initial guess with this initial parameter if you wanted to. So you can see you have your equation, your variable, and then the initial parameter. So I could say something to the effect of x sol t equal y sol t. We're going to solve for t. And let's try, remember it says like the solution is 0.23. Um, let's say that we thought that the solution was negative three. That was like our initial parameter, all right? We could go ahead and run this and we could see what VPA solve gives us, all right? And it still gives us the 0.23, all right? So it just uses a numerical solver. Um, even if I use something like three and ran it, then it gives us a different solution, all right? So there's a solution coming from the right and from the left as well, all right? And so we have to be cognizant of the fact there's probably gonna be two solutions to this. In fact, if we wanted to zoom in a little bit closer, we can go from zero to one, and we might be able to see those two solutions because one was 0.23 and one was 0.51. So we'll go ahead and run this one last time. And we're gonna get a different graph, which is really what we're interested in. And be patient. I'm sure it's working. I hope I didn't close it out. Let me run it one more time. Maybe I closed the graph by accident. All right. And that's really cool because now that we were able to zoom in, we could see those two solutions. All right. Remember, initially when we had the graph, uh, we didn't necessarily have that range of values. So a suggestion might be is if you're looking for the points of intersection, um, for the solutions, the series of, of, of to where the, um, the solutions, the differential equations are equal to one another, it might be good to start by throwing different values in for these parameters, all right? Start with the graph, see what the graph says. And then if the graph isn't really decisive, then you can go ahead and just kind of play around with this. So you could use something like one, and then you could go ahead and do the same thing. And you could say two, and you could say zero. And what it's gonna do is the VPA solve is going to give you what's going on around there, right? So this is one solution. And again, it's not exact, it's just VPA solve. And here's another solution, all right? And the graph here shows you specifically the points of the intersection. For that. So pretty cool that we can use MATLAB to really investigate these systems of differential equations, as opposed to what we would do by hand, which would take us a lot longer. And so the last video we're going to look at in this section is going to look at the ODE45 function which is going to numerically help us to solve differential equations.